Welcome back to Microbiology Lab. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to do a test that's just called 6.5% salt broth or 6.5% sodium chloride broth because the salt is NaCl. Okay, um, this is a very, very simple test. Um, there's really not a lot to it. Um, we're going to start with a test tube that's going to contain what will look like normal TSB broth. Remember, TSB is the kind of broth that's just a simple growth broth. Um, whenever you uh, take your stock solutions of bacteria, okay, your stocks of bacteria from broth, they're in TSB. It's going to look just like that. The only difference uh, that's really relevant here is that this broth has an additional 6.5% salt. All right. If you think back to the previous video that when we talked about MSA, mannitol salt agar had a 7.5% salt concentration. And I mentioned that was a very, very high salt concentration. And it's high enough to kill most bacteria. They cannot survive at that salt concentration. 6.5% is obviously a percent lower, but it's actually still pretty high. Okay. Um, now, staphylococcus organisms they could survive at 7.5%. So you would expect Staphylococcus to also survive at 6.5% salt broth. There are, uh, there are other species, though, that can now also survive at this percent because it is 1% lower. Um, for example, some species of Streptococcus, not all of them, but some streptis, Streptococcus species can actually survive here. Others cannot. Um, in fact, one thing that this test can be used for is if you know that you have a Streptococcus species, you can differentiate Streptococcus species by basically their ability to grow at the salt concentration or whether or not they die. Okay, so again, it's a high salt concentration, not as high as 7.5% from MSA, but it's still pretty high and inhibits a lot of bacteria. Okay, so what you would do, it's pretty simple. Here's our uninoculated uh, broth before we do anything to it. Um, and we're going to inoculate and incubate as normal. Okay. And when we pull it out of the incubator two days later, like we normally do, you're basically going to look for growth patterns. Okay. If you think back to earlier in the semester, or if you're at a different school, um, you probably did broth characteristics, culture characteristics, right? And you talked about different ways to identify whether or not you have growth in a broth. Okay. Um, for example, you probably saw turbidity, you saw sedimentation at the bottom of the tube, like little sand, if you poured sand in water, um, you see sedimentation. There's also rare kinds like pellicles and rings. We won't really see much of those, but the main two are gonna be turbidity and sedimentation. Uh, we wanna look for those. And if we have those, we have growth. And we would call those growth positive. Now, when you pull out your, your uh, fully inoculated and incubated uh, cultures in your salt broth, it may be difficult to tell if there's growth because how do you know what you're looking at is turbid? Well, what you're always going to do in this test is you're going to hold up your tube next to an uninoculated uh, tube of salt broth. So there was nothing done to this. This is a control. Okay, this is what it looks like before you ever put anything in it or incubated it. Okay, so let's look at the three major cases we'll have. This first one is growth negative. Okay, and if you pull out your salt broth like this after incubating it, and it looks identical to the uninoculated version, identical, then you call it growth negative. And it really has to look identical. You put them side by side. What I would recommend doing is you literally just hold them in your hands. You put them right next to each other, basically touch them. And if they look identical, uh, if this one looks identical to the control, the uninoculated uh, version of the broth, then that one is growth negative, okay? And it has to be identical to the control. And there's really nothing else to this test. The only thing you indicate is growth negative. And in our class, I don't know about yours, but um, we're welcome to put just the negative sign. It's all we need. But it technically is growth negative, all right? Now, what happens if you pull it out and it's turbid? Well, how do you know it's turbid? Well, again, you take the uninoculated control and you put it right next to it. Now, if you're looking at this, you can clearly tell this one on the right is darker. Um, the broth is turbid, it's cloudy relative to the control. So because it's cloudy and it's turbid, we would consider this one growth positive, okay? And it's growth positive 
because it's turbid. That indicates that we have growth, that bacteria did survive at 6.5% salt, therefore it's growth positive. Um, we're welcome here to put just the plus sign, okay? Now, in some cases, you might have, you might have turbidity and sedimentation, um, in which case, if you have turbidity and sedimentation, that's automatically growth positive. In some cases, it may not look as turbid, um, it may look more or less similar to the control, but there may be some sedimentation at the bottom. Now again, you can take your uninoculated one and put it side by side. Now in this example, I purposely did this. Um, it doesn't appear like there's actually much of a difference between uh, the broths here. Now this one on the right, it might be a tad darker, but it's hard to tell. But it's clearly got sedimentation at the bottom, and sedimentation is a sign that you have bacterial growth. Therefore, uh, if I had this, even if the broth itself was identical in color, it really wasn't that turbid, the fact that I have sedimentation on the bottom also means it's growth positive. Those bacteria did survive the high salt concentration and therefore I have a growth positive um, species okay, in this broth. All right, so the bottom line is if you have turbidity and or sedimentation, it doesn't have to be both, it can be either one, then you have a growth positive organism in 6.5% salt, but if, you're, uh, if your inoculated and incubated broth looks identical to the control, it's growth negative. Now here's some actual examples and what they may look like. Okay, so here is an uninoculated control. Here's the same picture from the previous slide, but this is a real tube. Um, you can see it does look very similar to TSB. Um, the growth broth. Now what about this one? Now this one I've already told you is growth negative, but again we can take this and put it right next to that. And you notice when you put them side by side there really doesn't appear to be a difference in color. Okay, so uh, this one was growth negative. All right, now again I've got two I've got two growth positive ones right here. This first one I, I can just look, I probably wouldn't even need to put that next to a control. That's clearly turbid. Again, I can put the control next to it, but you can very easily see that uh, this one is very, very cloudy. There's clearly growth in here, so this one is a growth positive uh, salt broth. Okay. Now this one over here, if you were just looking at it, it may be a little bit questionable. Maybe it's a little turbid. Um, I can't tell with this resolution in the image. There might be some sedimentation down there. Uh, I can't say that for fact just looking at it, but it looks maybe a little cloudy, I'm not sure. But again, take your control and put it right next to that and you can clearly see it's cloudy, okay? It's not as cloudy as this one over here, but it's still cloudy, there's still growth, bacteria survived it, so therefore um, this is a positive growth in the 6.5% salt, okay? And that is how you interpret the salt broth. The only thing you need to put for, the, for your answer for interpreting the result is either a positive or a growth positive or negative or growth negative, okay? And that's how you do the test. Very simple. Um, this is really all it tells you, but the major application of it is it's gonna be used to differentiate streptococcus species whether or not they can grow at this concentration. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.